Hello everybody, this is Mike Fauché. With more computers having Thunderbolt and USB 4, I wanted to find an external enclosure that would support both Thunderbolt for pure speed, yet be backwards compatible with 3.1 and 3.0, which proved to be a little more difficult than I thought. Today I'm going to cover the Orico NVMe enclosure that has dual controllers for both speed and compatibility. If you want to learn more about this enclosure, then stay and watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified of all the new content. I recently got an M1 MacBook Air and given the limited affordable storage in these devices, I wanted to take advantage of the USB 4 ports and add some high speed storage when doing video editing or working with other large files. The challenge is none of my desktops have USB 4 or Thunderbolt ports and finding one that supports these standards and be backwards compatible is not as easy as I thought. Most of the NVMe enclosures support one or the other but not both. When I ran across the Orico I was kind of intrigued because it claimed to have both the Intel and the J-Micron controller. This way it could support the 40 gigabit per second spec of the USB 4 and Thunderbolt and still be backwards compatible with USB 3.2, 3.1, and 3.0 at up to the 10 gigabit per second speed. In this category, I also tested the Yoda Master device, which, was, which has the same basic feature set, and it's a bit cheaper. But overall, I liked the Orico better. It performed a little better, and the construction overall was better, and it was a lot easier to replace the SSD. Let's take a quick overview of the hardware. It comes with two basic cables. One is the Thunderbolt cable, and the second one is a USB-C to USB-A cable. It comes with the screw, the SSD pad, and of course the enclosure, and they throw in a screwdriver to boot. For purposes of this configuration, I'm going to use a Samsung 980 one terabyte NVMe SSD. As you can see, it slides right into the slot um, once you remove the front cover and you just use the single screw to actually mount the drive. Once you have that NVMe mounted, the next step is to actually apply the pad. Now you need to make sure you remove the plastic off of both sides. And um, while we're putting this on, I wanted to just mention there's probably going to be some comments on whether or not you should remove the label and my viewpoint still stands it doesn't make all that much difference and it does void your warranty so I personally leave them on you can take it off if you want to once you got that pad on you can go ahead and put the cover on and torque down the one single screw that holds the cover on it kind of slides into a notch there and you just tighten down that one screw and once we're done with that we're ready to go we plug the cable of choice in and we'll get the thing attached and formatted. I'm going to go ahead and format this using XFAT, but you can use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm using XFAT to get maximum compatibility between the Mac OS and Windows. For testing, I'm going to use my M1 Mac Air to test the Thunderbolt speed, and we'll use my Windows desktop to test the USB 3.1 performance and compatibility. As you can see, the speed is incredibly fast, though it's nowhere near what's published by either Thunderbolt or by the 980 SSD itself. As an added data point, I connected my 2018 Razer Stealth, which has a single Thunderbolt port, just to see how it would perform. As you can see from the benchmarks, the overall performance is pretty good. The read speeds are pretty awesome, but the write speeds are only average, especially for Thunderbolt. There are obviously some differences in the benchmarks used, as well as the host computers themselves, but it gives you an idea of how well it performs just all the way around. As for the USB 3.1, the performance is pretty good for a USB device, and it's faster than most USB devices that I've tested before. I haven't had any compatibility issues with the USB, and everything seems to be auto-detected as soon as I plugged in. A quick note on the Yoda Master device. On paper, these two devices are exactly the same. However, when I tested this device, not only was it more difficult to install the SSD, but the write performance was actually 50% less than the Orico, though the read performance was about the same. 
It's not clear why there should be such a difference, but for a small price difference, the Orico is a much better choice. So in summary, this enclosure is pretty versatile and I'm really happy with the performance. Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 devices are not cheap, but as you can see from the testing, the performance is pretty good, making an ideal add-on for your Mac or Windows PC that's equipped with a USB 4 or Thunderbolt interface, and still have the versatility of using this device on your desktop or laptop that only has a USB 3.x interface. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Again, if you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification so you'll be notified of any new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.